Hello my loves and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If you're meeting for the first time, welcome. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. As you guys can tell by the title of today's video, we are going to be diving into the energy of the Cancer New Moon, but we're doing things a very lot differently, if that is even English speak, so to speak, because I'm honoring the messages as they flow. I hope that you guys are doing well. I'm not going to waste any time. There is so much that, again, I feel like we need to dive into. I just finished a reading for a friend, and as I was channeling for her, there were moments where I was like, mm, this isn't for her. This is for the collective. And there were moments, too, a part of that reading that I'm like, this is I can feel within my energy that this is a question, a concern that a lot of a lot of people have. And what a blessing it is to come here to share with the community, to connect with the tribe, to connect with the vibes, and to validate certain experiences, to give reassurance, affirmation, confirmation for a lot of you guys that have been connecting with your angels and your guides, your ancestors, to help you along your way. And that ultimately is why I'm here today, and I think ultimately why, why you're here you know, tuning in to my energy and these messages in this moment. So <clears throat> I will be working with the tarot. The tarot cards that I'm going to be working with are linked in my Amazon shop. I'll link that down below. But for the most part, let's go ahead and dive right in. So the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about and the first thing that I feel so clear on my spirit with the Cancer New Moon, Cancer Energy takes us to the space within ourselves where we are are at home, where we can be nurtured, where we can be supported, where we can be poured into. And the parts of ourselves that when that is not happening, how we will individually try to fix it, heal, soothe, nurture ourselves. Cancer is the cardinal sign in the zodiac and it doesn't sit back passively and wait for what it feels it not deserves but needs at a core base level. This new moon is happening in the sign of Cancer. Not only is this new moon happening in the sign of Cancer, but there are a lot of other transits at the time of me sharing this message with you guys. Pluto retrograde, Saturn retrograde, Neptune retrograde. Now, if you are watching from the future, I want to tell you that this video that we are talking about today or this information, this message, these messages that we're sharing today, they are not inspired by the Cancer New Moon. They are a product of the Cancer New Moon that is going to reach you at this moment in time, wherever you are at in your life. So when you hear me talking about these transits, it will not necessarily apply to you, those transits, but the message, the message will remain the same. If you're watching at the time of the Cancer New Moon or the days around the Cancer New Moon, then of course it will provide additional understanding, but the message itself remains the same. Now going within and sitting with my angels and sitting with the guides and sitting with the ancestors, we have to remember that as individual human beings, we all have unique needs. We are also on this journey where we are sometimes exhaustively finding ourselves, rediscovering ourselves again and again in different forms because we are always evolving, we're always transforming, we are always shifting. This means that we're never the same, which means that because we're not the same, our needs shift and change. And then the next word that I'm hearing with shifting and change is the word remember, that there are going to be certain parts of yourself as you have changed, as you evolved, that it's going to open up like a little door, a little portal where you're going to see and remember that this, this part of you needs to be fed. This part of you needs to be nourished. This part of you has been neglected. This part of you has been overlooked. This part may be overwatered, but this part is underwatered and it needs nourishment and cancer is the zodiac sign or the time, the season, the cycle within our lives where we remember how we need to be nourished so that the outside world doesn't destroy us. So that the outside world doesn't destroy us. There's a few messages that came with that. And one of the first one is the Orisha Oshun. 
And regardless of your spiritual practice, regardless of your beliefs, I want to tell you for the first time or tell you for the infinite time that you've heard her story, she never, she always knew her worth and her value, but when she felt like she was being taken advantage of, when she was depleted, when she wasn't appreciated, the first thing that she did, Oshun, the Orisha, was to revert, to pull away, to disconnect in out of sadness, but also anger that she would ever be taken advantage of, especially an energy whose intention was to make this world and the people that are around her feel good, feel supported, feel watered, feel taken care of spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally. She pulled away when she started feeling that it was being abused, when it was being taken advantage of, or when she herself was feeling depleted and underappreciated. It wasn't until and depends on who's telling the story here, it wasn't until someone came to pour into her and tell her, listen, without you, the waters dry up. Without you, there is no sweetness. Without you, there's no beauty, and we're losing the meaning and the substance of life. There's that part of that story, depends on who's telling it, and there's the other side of the story that reminds us that she had a lot of people come to her and validate her and remind her of her worth and her value. But at the end of the day, her anger, her sadness, and her disconnect came from the fact that she was underappreciated, she was underwatered, undernourished, and she overgave. And it had a, it had a repercussion. One of the reasons why I believe that Spirit is bringing this to us right now is to remind you of the fact that you have to understand what value you hold here in this world. If you are someone who is giving, 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 or if you are someone who needs a validation, needs that love, needs that support, and needs that nourishment, without it, you can't see the gifts that you bring to the rest of the world. There's that, but ultimately, your own self-worth and your own self courage and your own self identity and power and understanding starts to diminish. It starts to whittle away. It starts to dry out. And for this moment in time, as we are looking at water energy, cancer specifically, when we're looking at the water, we are invited each individually to look at the very needs that you have now to water and to nourish yourself. With that, guys, I want to remind you, too, of defense mechanisms and how we fight to protect ourselves when we are undernourished or when we feel abused, when we feel taken advantage of, or when we lose our power. How do you self-protect? How do you self-preserve? How has that energy shown up in your life in a repeating pattern or a new way that you are discovering within yourself within this moment? Your awareness of yourself is a big part of your liberation because you understand yourself through and through and no one, not nothing, can tell you what is right for you what is happening within you. There may be some moments or elders or wise, wizened ones or enlightened individuals who may see you and see through you to the core of you that may enlighten you. But ultimately, if you're crossing paths with those types of people, half of the time you've manifested it, half of the time you've called it in, which means that in some way you were open, you were receptive, and you brought it into your life, which is showing you what the power of what it is that you can do. The power it is of what you are capable of, right? So in this moment, with this, with this um, level of awareness, right? And how, or this new level of awareness that you can gain for yourself, really take a look at how you may be defensive, how you may feel disconnected, how you may feel lost, how may you how you may feel powerless, really sit with that energy and see not only how you react, like what is your reaction to this, but ultimately where is this coming from? 
Where is this really coming from? With the waters, and anytime we're dealing with water energy, and I teach this in Sacred Circle Tarot School, we are going to be able to tap into the depths of our intuition, but also magic and power and subconscious. And at the time of this new moon, or at the time it is that you're hearing this message, there is a really strong, the word is phenomena, of I feel awakening within the people, within ourselves, or those who are called to watch this video, or listen to this message where if you're going to an altar, you're going to the ocean, you're taking a bath, this, the, the water that you are in, the water that has energy, the water that holds power, the water that you are putting on your skin, the water that you are drinking, it is going to have its own, if you allow it to be, if you speak it into existence, if you call it, if you declare it, this could be a rebirth, a reawakening of you coming back to your internal, your internal powers, that thing that you internally sense, but the disconnect may be there, especially if you feel disconnected from your spirit, disconnected from your higher self, disconnected from your angels, your guides, your ancestors, the universe, especially again, if you are underwatered, right? And undernourished. I want to tell you that there was this additional message that came through and I'm going to pass it on over to you guys, although it was directed in the moment. It seemed that it was directed to this person that I was doing the reading for, but a friend, but um, it really felt like it was bigger. It really, sh some of the concerns that we were diving into were so clearly obvious not a, a her problem it was a whole world issue and if you are someone who is a part of this greater collective a part of the whole the greater whole then that means that you are just as much in this as the rest of us and in that we can all be at a point where we're at a high vibration we could be at a low vibration we could be figuring it out in the middle and a combination of any one of those things there are th some things that we can control. There are some things that we can show up for. There are some things that we can change and pivot. And there are some things that just are simply a sign of the times, but we are not meant to succumb to them. We are not meant to crush and to crack under the weight and the pressure of the things that it is that we cannot control. We are meant to go to our altars. We are meant to go to our sacred spaces, whether that be your yoga mat, whether that be the 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 path in the woods, whether that be your car, whether that be your bed, whether that be your prayer closet, you're meant to go to those sacred spaces and call out to that which you believe in, the divine, God, universe, ancestors, your angels, your guides, and reinvite them into your life so that the disconnection that you feel doesn't have the opportunity to breed and fester and continue to manifest in a way that makes you feel powerless, out of control, and allows your subconscious fears to take full reign instead of your inner understanding that you are a supremely, divinely created creature that has significance and value and is a part of all of this and is taken into consideration and is also being protected if you are open to it. There comes a point where we can disconnect ourselves so much from our spiritual selves, from that spiritual source of water and replenishment within ourselves, and we are not pouring into that spiritual part of ourselves, that we start to take on burdens and baggage that damages us because we feel like we could have done more. We could have changed the situation. If I would have done this, if I would have shown up, then this would have been this one. Then my survival wouldn't be threatened. Then that all of these outcomes that when we sit with ourselves, sensing that we are powerful creators, sensing that we're powerful creatures, that when we don't have the answer, when there there's the outcome doesn't match the intention, the outcome doesn't match what we tried to manifest, the outcome doesn't match what we wanted for ourselves and we didn't try to manifest or set intention, we take it and we personalize it. We make it as if we did that when truthfully, there are certain things that are simply outside of our control because there's a bigger plan, a bigger picture that still needs to unfold for our lives. Not just your life, not just your neighbor, not just your friend, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your family, the world that you know it, but the world as a whole, there is a greater agenda that is divinely appointed and happening right now, like unfolding right now. If you're not careful, 
and you are too wired into what the world has got going on and you are not connected and you're not watering that internal world, that spiritual world, those keeping the waters within yourself clean and pure, then you are inevitably going to take on things, burden yourself with things that don't concern you, that don't are not because of you. And your feeling of powerfulness and your sense of responsibility that each of us do individually carry is going to be misguided. It will be misplaced. It is not, it's not settling in the place where it deserves to settle. You're taking on a burden, a baggage that is not for you. Having said that, when you go to the wells of the soul, when you go to the waters of the heart and you sit with that, with those waters, right? This metaphorical, spiritual, symbolic water that rests within your soul that is meant to be kept pure, that's meant to be kept clean, that isn't meant to take on and absorb the outside, right? When you sit with yourself and you and you have peace and you are striving for peace or if you're asking for peace and if there's quiet there, you will begin to hear. Not only will you begin to hear the echoing of what's going on within you and what you need, but you'll also start to hear the voices of your ancestors, your angels, your guides, God, the divine that has been overlooking you, watching you, protecting you, re trying to reassure you all this time, but you couldn't hear it because that place is quiet. It is a notoriously supernaturally quiet place that the silence of it is so loud that the only way that you can understand and sit and comprehend is if you try to quiet the noise of your mind and all of the things that is that you're thinking. And over time, that place doesn't change, but you can drift away from it. You can always go back, but you can drift away from it. And it makes it harder for you to remember what it feels like when you're sitting at those waters and you're asking for clarity and you're gaining some direction and you're hearing the wisdom and you're understanding yourself and you're finally allowing yourself to simply let it go. You allow yourself to simply accept, not that you're saying that the situation that's going on around you for good or for bad is because of you or good or right or whatever it is that you wanna define it, it just is what it is. And you're able to have peace and surrender it and accept it and realize that it has nothing to do with you, whatever whatever it is. Whether it's the, uh, the biggest blessing in your life, like the, a big gift, something that is a responsibility or a punishment, something that feels painful, something that you don't understand, something that you don't like, something that is uncertain, something that feels taboo. All of these things, it doesn't have a title when you sit with it within yourself and you allow your angels and your guides to, to speak to you and say, we just want to make sure that you're good. We want to make sure that your soul is clear. We want to make sure that the waters are clear. We want to make sure that you're spiritually fine. Like we want, we will not put you in a place that would drag you down, that you couldn't walk in, that you couldn't swim across, that you couldn't fly around and there's so many things that are happening around you for your greater protection and for your greater blessing and for the sake of your peace but you may not see that and sense that because you're not trusting us you're not trusting us and the question that came up is what are we like what are you fighting this happened in the reading but again I saw how it applied to the collective what are you actually fighting here? Like, who are you fighting? Especially as we look at cancer season, and I'll try to keep this, I don't say short because I'm not trying to chop up a message from our angels and our guides into the divine. I'm just not going to do that. Like, that's not my place. But um, I, 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 I do feel this kind of um, energy coming to a close. But with the cancer, with this cancer energy, Again, yes, there's a Cancer New Moon tonight at the time of me filming this. And of course, I don't even want to say that it inspired the message that I'm sharing with you guys today. It's 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 not coincidental. It's not coincidental. It's synchronistic. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It is what it is. Um, but I think 
it's symbolic and I think it's timeless. And I think that throughout the different seasons in our life, regardless of where the planets are and regardless of what's going on in our life, we have to be reminded of this. But with cancer energy, there's a part of ourselves that nurture and can be nurtured and needs to be nurtured and needs to nurture. And there is the other side of ourselves that is an advocate, that is a warrior, an emotional warrior, an intuitive warrior, and knows. And when I'm saying warrior, I mean the one, the part of us that fights, not worries, not as concerned. The part of ourselves that knows our direction, that knows who we are, that knows where we comes, knows where we come from. This does not mean what our family and upbringing look like because every one of us have different stories and you are not your family. You have been a product of your family, meaning like there is an impact that is left on every single one of us, depending on the way that the family shapes us. And I'm talking about the family because cancer rules that energy, but you have to understand who you are in the waters of your soul outside of who is around you, friends, family, path, purpose. You have to understand who it is that you are in the pure waters of your soul without title, without explanation, without reason, just who you are innately, inherently, the way that the divine sees you and the way that you are meant to be protected and cherished and watered and nourished. There's You are to see yourself in the way that this higher source, this higher divine love, unconditional love and unconditional protection and unconditional rage because they hate to see you suffer. They do not ever want to see you suffer. It is not a burden for you to carry. It is not, even your accomplishments and your achievements do not define you. Your failures and the struggle does not define you. Your gifts or your challenges do not define you. Who are you to your core, that pure point of who you are. That is what spirit sees of you. That is what makes you special. That is what is the glimmer here that you are here on earth and you are not meant to do anything other with with that than just simply be. If you feel called by your angels and your guides to or the divine or a path or purpose or season in your life to do something uh, with your physical energy or with your emotional energy or mental energy, then by all means answer and heed that call because that is spirit's way of moving through you and moving your physical body. But at the end of the day, make sure that the waters are nourished. Make sure that the emotional waters of yourself are nourished. The mental waters of yourself are nourished. The spiritual waters of yourself are nourished and physical so that you are not collapsing again under the pressure of all of it all of it all truly so um yeah <laughs> that's um that's what i'm seeing let me just shuffle some cards you guys know i'm definitely one for a tarot moment um Six of Pentacles reversed, Five of Pentacles upright, Page of Cups reversed, Queen of Pentacles reversed, and the Three of Wands. Interesting with the Three of Wands card, this 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 always comes up. Um, let me show you it real quick. This is about looking out, and for some of you guys, the question is like, what's next? What what is going to happen next? Right? What is going to happen next within life? Just I hear you, I feel you, I, I sense that that speaks to me, but I need to know what's going to happen next because I'm unsure of myself, I'm unsure of my footing, I'm unsure of the future, and I want to tell you to validate you. That would only make sense astrologically. You guys know I had to bring it back to astrology because astrology is it for me, but. Astrologically speaking, there's just so many things right now that just make the, sh the future so unsure. It makes it very wonky, wonkadocious is how I like to call it. Uranus transiting through Taurus. Taurus is the earth, the era, the, the terra, I'm sorry. It's what we ground ourselves in, what we like to stabilize ourselves in, regardless if you're air or fire or water or earth energy. We do have a part of ourselves that when that area of our lives is stabilized, we tend to thrive. 
um, it's something that has value, it holds value to us, and when that's called into question, our sense of security tends to um, destabilize, right? We also have, at the time of me filming this, Neptune retrograde, Saturn retrograde, Pluto retrograde, and if you're tuning in from the future, I can only imagine what transits it is that you might be going through, but either way, what we have here is change, unpredictable patterns, turbulence, unexpected developments, karma, transition, transformation, growth, and all of that is uncertain. All of that is sometimes feels uh, problematic, and a lot of it feels very uncomfortable. With this, I think it's important for you to tap into, especially with the Page of Cups reversed, is this reminder that you may not necessarily know what's going to happen. You're not supposed to know what's going to happen. That's easier said than done. I'm a Virgo. I don't like surprises. So I have to put a pin in this for myself when the future does seem uncertain. What is next? What? How can I prepare for something that I don't know or I've been preparing for this and it didn't pan out the way that it was that I was expecting? The, the point is that in your vulnerability, right, with not knowing what's going to happen next, number one, it's a perception of what you trust in the moment. At the end of the day, we have no idea whether everything feels stable and secure if things are going to pan out or if they're going to pivot and change left and right when we get to that crossroad. The only thing that has changed is how we feel about what we are facing. So with this, this is that, that sense of acceptance that spirit is trying to get you to commit to. <laughs> crazy that they just use the word commit, like really commit to the idea of accepting the current moment and where that moment will bring you and, and be assured, be reassured and have confidence that it will not only be okay and be what it is, but if your heart is open, you have no choice but to learn to grow and to gain so much from the experience because your heart is open and vulnerable and receptive and wired and connected and committed to the divine, their path and their purpose and what you can do within that moment. You don't need to have a plan for that. The best thing to do is to move in the way that feels the most authentic to you, period. There is no plan. There is no reasoning. There is no logic. It is intuitive. It is divine and it is good. That is the right thing. So when you are facing the future and you don't know what happens next, the next thing that you need to know, the only thing that you need to know is that I'm going to consciously, powerfully choose to let my guard down and allow the divine to move and flow through, through me and to speak to me so that I can be open to this moment and the next moment and the next moment and be a reflection of the divine's grace and strength and power and blessing and favor over my life. That's going to be the point. That's going to be the point. That's going to be a, the biggest part of my legacy is the fact that throughout it all, I was able to remain pure or I had a moment where I chose today I choose to purify my soul. I choose to lighten the load. I choose to not allow the outside world in. I choose to move with peace. I choose to reflect on my authenticity and moving with integrity because there's too many things that I have been doing and moving and saying and feeling, maybe not feeling, but there's too many things that didn't reflect what it was that I was feeling. And I needed to match. I needed to match. I needed to align. So... That's definitely, that's definitely here for, for, for you. Now, I do want to say that the word that has been coming through at the Cancer New Moon for tonight, but, or in this moment, because this is more of a moment thing, is the word growth. And with the word growth, holding its hand is the word expansion. And with the word expansion, it's not connected to material abundance or wealth or wisdom. It's it's um, how we ourselves can go from being disconnected and feeling very limited in our bodies here to expanding beyond our limitations and just really like narrowing in on why we are 
why, not why, but like the purpose of and the beauty of what human beings are to their core, but don't always recognize meaning like we just kind of sometimes get caught in our heads and or our hearts kind of get broken or our hearts kind of falter or our hearts get scared or wonky or fickle, fickle or shaky. And we have to listen to the heart, see the heart, listen to the mind, hear the mind, and then see both. And from a higher place, a higher power, connect with that, choose to connect to that higher power, choose to connect with the divine source and lead the mind and the heart into a place that is in alignment with what the divine sees, wishes, wants for all of us. That's going to give you the greatest peace, truthfully. So I am setting intention right now in this moment that you understand how great you are. I'm setting intention that in this moment, you do not feel insignificant. I'm setting intention that you are able to pour into this, your soul, like literally those waters. I'm setting intention that you have an idea, a vision of what those waters of your soul look like. For me, I have a specific vision that comes through, but I'm not sharing that with the internet because it's a place that should be purified. It's a space that is sacred. It is a space that belongs to you. It's a space that only you can go to. What does that look like for you? And when you sit within those waters and when you're quiet, what do you hear in that environment first before you start listening to your heart and your mind and then before you start listening to your angels and your guides and the divine? What do you hear? Make a note of it. Observe it. And put a pin in it so that you can go back. Then from that place, I'm setting intention that you don't stay away from those place or from that place for too long. You may not necessarily visit that place every day or every week, but that you don't stay away from it for too long because... It is good and right for you to feel the support and feel and to water that place and to make sure that that place is not getting polluted by your experience while you are walking here on this earth. My intention for you is that your spirit feels light, that your soul feels light, and that any type of burdens and baggages or you know, um, things that you're carrying, that this is the, a moment that you decide to let that go for once and for all. If there's any part of you that you have not accepted, any part of your past that you have not forgiven and you can't come to terms with it, that this is a moment where you allow that to be let go of, that you accept it for it being what it is, not that you give it permission and say like it was good that that happened, but that you accept it as it is what it is. It happened. And now for the sake of my soul and the sake of my journey and the sake of my waters, I'm going to forgive the situation, forgive myself, forgive anyone involved and choose to move and pivot and do differently and have a completely clean slate and fresh start. And that's a wonderful way to start getting rid of any types of any type of toxins and pollutants that have gotten into the waters of your soul. I'm setting intention that anything that is making you feel like you are striving, but the strive is in vain, that the moves that you are making don't feel purposeless or don't feel purposeful, that they don't have value to you, but you feel like you have something to prove or something to accomplish or you have, you're not moving at all. It's time for you to let that go so that at any point, at any time, you can change and pivot and connect to what really is important to you and how you want to use the time that you have here on earth. The rest of the time that is that you have here on earth. I'm setting intention that for those who are around you, whether they see your value, whether they love you, whether they acknowledge you, accept you, validate you, 
that you accept that too. And that at the end of the day, you can show gratitude and, and feel appreciation and warmth for the support that it is that you get. But it doesn't, at the end of the day, impact how you see and view yourself and how it doesn't change how the divine feels about you regardless, infinitely. Love, like the love is, it's, it is going to be there regardless. So I'm setting intention for your peace. I'm setting intention for your happiness. I'm setting intention for that. Those of you guys that are navigating through waters of sadness or grief or frustration or agitation or distrust that the universe be kind to you and that there be a helping hand, a hand that pulls you out of that water or that you feel the presence of your angels and your guides in the place that is that you are treading water and you know that you're not alone and that you're able to understand the value that the pain that it is that you're feeling or the discomfort that is that you're feeling that it is it can give to you in this moment and there's a lot of varying weights of things that we experience here as human beings and that's why I say it's hard <laughs> it's very hard being human I say that all the time I say it a little less now but I used to say it a whole lot more back in the day because girl it was hard <laughs> thank god for change change that is inevitable change that you have to grow, go through change that you have to grow through um, I'm setting intention for your rest, whether that be physical, mental, spiritual, did I say emotional rest? Just rest, man, like rest through and through that when you sleep, that you be, it's just be everything, not too much, not too little. And also I'm setting intention for the feeling of restoration, especially spiritual restoration for every single one of you. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me. Literally sending you all the love that the universe can ever give and all the love that the divine has for you is yours to feel right now in this moment. I'm hoping that you are well. I'm hoping that you remember that if you're not well, that you're about to be well. And I'll see you guys in the next message because there's a ton. I've been channeling like crazy lately. Crazy. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.